Hello everybody, my name is Juan Silvestre from William Fires University. We're doing a video on a physical examination of GA, a musculoskeletal and neurological system. We have a different setting today, so we're going to stand up for demonstration purposes. All right, so we have the GA. We start with inspection. Very quickly, we scan the skin, looking for jaundice. We're looking at the sclera, looking for the yellow jaundice in the sclera. We're looking for St. Thomas, signs of hyperlipidemia or hepatic issues. All right, when we look at the... Um, um, GI, we're looking at the four quadrants, left, up, left, right, and uh, left, and right upper quadrants, and left and right lower quadrants, all right? So we're looking for peristaltis, if you can see any peristaltis, looking for distension or any signs of symptoms of constipation or, or obstruction, all right? So that's very important. You also look at the colon sign, just in case there is any discoloration of the umbilicus area. That's a classic symptom of uh, rupture, ectopic pregnancy, or also or acute... Um, uh, necrotic pancre pancreatitis all right so it's good to rule out that there's many different pains in the abdominal area you have to rule out whether it's a topic pregnancy ovaries or regardless uh, um diverticulitis or or appendicitis i'm sorry all right so the next thing we do we do is all auscultation very quickly we auscultate looking for sounds hyper hypo normal uh, normal active sounds for demonstration purposes we're gonna move a little bit faster usually you'd have to hear at least one to three minutes for the sounds we're looking for tympanic sounds she's okay she's fine all right we also look into uh, auscultate at the aorta in the midline above the umbilicus area looking for any brutes all right a bifurcation it goes into the iliac Looking for bruits, there is no bruits there, negative for bruits, and then the femoral. Okay, there is no bruits on the femoral. Alright, so we're going to go with auscultation. If we want to auscultate also uh, for renal stenosis, we have to look in the back, the front. You cannot really hear the uh, renal arteries, it's mostly posteriorly. So we listen about lumbar L2. We listen for any bruits, any issues like that. All right, the next thing we do after auscultation we do is uh, percussion. So we're looking for, um, for tympanic sounds all over the abdominal area, left, upper, and lower. And we're also looking for signs of the patient if they're feeling uh, signs of symptoms of pain or anything like that. If you feel like a lot of dullness around the whole thing, it's like maybe it's malignancy, if it's too much fluid, or maybe just uh, uh, organomegaly, all right? Right now she's okay, she's all tympanic around the abdominal area. We're also looking for um, the um, spam of the liver. The way to do it is the right clavicular line around the umbilical area. You start uh, percussing all the way up until you find dullness, which is right here. You mark it, and then from here, about the second intercostal step page, you keep going down and then you find dullness. So right here, from here to here, you measure. You take a ruler, and it's approximately about seven in, uh, seven centimeters, which is a normal size, usually between six and 12. We do the same thing with, um, with the spleen. From the um, umbilical area, you keep di going diagonally, or you can also go from here up, okay? From the axillary area, axillary uh, midline. All right, until you find dullness. You usually find it around between six and 10 intercostal space, uh, and that's where the spleen is. If it's enlarged, you will find it underneath the rib cage. I mean, a little bit lower than the margin of the, of the rib cage. That would be um, indica indicative of uh, splenomegaly, which is um, um, trauma, when a portal hypertension or mononucleosis, all right? All right, that's uh, for percussion, that's good. You can also check for the CVA if you don't mind to sit around here, Angelica. For CVA, we check for um, costal vertebral angle or pain. We check for, um, we also palpate here. If there's any pain when we tap like this, that means that they probably have some kind of kidney stones or nephrolithosis, nephrolithosis or hydronephrosis, all right? If there is no pain, then we do uh, the punch. If they have pain with this, then it's indicative of kidney issues. So we have need a, a further workup, okay? Mm -hmm. You can lay down. 
Thank you, Angelica. Thank you very much. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, we already did percussion. We're going to do palpation, all right? So with the palpation, we do light palpation and we, go, we do a deep palpation, all right? I just need you to lower here. Thank you. Because we need to expose the upper and lower quadrants, all right? So light palpation, we go around the area in a circular motion, looking at the... Um, a subcutaneous tissue looking for any masses which i found some lipomas which are normal it's fine all right there is no issues we're also looking for pain if there's any pain we'll leave it for last a deep palpation we go about two to four centimeters down we ask the patient to breathe normally we just palpate around the area they feel a little bit discomfort is fine but definitely if they guard or they have grimacing in their face that might be some indication of something happening doesn't mean it's something bad, but it could be just something mild. All right, so I don't feel anything there. No issues, no masses there. So I'm going to palpate the liver. The liver, in order to palpate the liver, we do the same thing as before, right mid clavicular line going up until you find the liver over here. I can, can feel it here. All right, I do the same thing. And the, with the spleen, you cannot really feel it. So usually when it's normal size, it's under the rib cage in between 6th and 10th intercostal space. All right, if it's enlarged, you will be able to palpate it underneath the costal margin. Okay, so that's for palpation, for deep palpation. Uh, another one, uh, way that whether they have um, any kind of pain or any issues, we can check for appendicitis during the rebound tenderness. The rebound tenderness, the way it works is that we press on the area where they have pain. We do deep palpation and then when they let it go, they feel more pain than before. That's a positive sign for appendicitis. All right, the rubber signs. The rubber sign is when you palpate on the opposite side of the pain. When you put pressure there, you're gonna feel more pain on that side where they had pain before. So that's a positive sign. All right, whether it's the verticulitis or appendicitis or that. Another way to taste for um, appendicitis is the uh, up, up to date test. So we're gonna ask her to flex her knee, put your hand like this way, and I need you to pressure against my hand. If you felt, did you feel any pain? That means it's negative for appendicitis. If it was positive pain, then it would be positive for appendicitis. All right, another way to check for any issues with the liver or the gallbladder, or sometimes, if they, no, not the pancreas, but mostly is the liver and the, the, the gallbladder. Is if you do palpation, you locate the liver, and then you palpate the liver, you ask the patient to take a deep breath at the same time. If they're not able to take a deep breath while you palpate, that means that there's a positive sign, means that there's some, something going on whether it's the gallbladder or the liver, so it needs further investigation. All right, that's called the morphine sign, morphine sign. Okay, so we're done with palpation. Uh, we're good with that, I think we're good with GI. All right, so we're gonna move into musculoskeletal. So if you don't mind just going up for me, please. So I'm gonna move this over here for you. So just keep going up, and I need you to elevate the head of the bed, please. And I'm gonna gather my things here, making sure that everything from the control. So we're gonna check cranial nerves number one through 12, all right? Cranial nerve number one is the uh, one to test for smell, any anosmia, anything that's going on. So we wanna make sure that they're able to smell. So can you please cover one of your nostrils and you tell me what you smell? Coffee. That's good. How the other one? Chewing. Okay, perfect. So she's good. Cranial nerve number one is, is, is intact for her. There is no issues. Usually that happens with COVID-19 right now or any neurological trauma or anything like that. All right, the next uh, cranial nerve is going to be nerve, uh, cranial nerve number two, which is optic. So the first thing we're going to check is the acuity. So I'm going to ask you to cover one of your eyes, Angelica. I need you to read uh, right here. L T F B H. Cover your other eye. L D F B H. Okay, so that means you have a 20 20 vision. Your optic uh, nerve is good in good condition. One more way to check. We're going to check with the frontus. Just look the front, please. I'm going to stand over here and I'm going to. Okay, so I see the disc. This is in good shape. Look in the front and look at me. All right, so it's good. 
it's in good shape and the, the retinas in there is in place there is no redness or anything like that no no issue there all right so that's optic nerve number two we're going to check for optic nerve number three four and six which is for extraocular movements all right checking for any stigmas um nystagmus all right a deviation in your eyes or so movement rapid movement of your eyes so the thing that we're going to do is i'm going to ask you to we're going to check for pupillary reaction first look in the front so we're looking for pupillary reaction which is positive and also conversion on the other eye which is positive as well so so far so good i need you to cover one of your eyes i'm going to cover mine i'm going to give you a number you tell me okay how many fingers do you see two Two, two, one. Other eye? Four, two, two, three. Perfect. Now I need you to look at here with your eyes only, not your head. Follow, follow it. I'm looking, checking at the same time for a strabismus. One in nystagmus, okay? Don't move your head. Okay, she's doing good. She passed the test. There is no neurological issues There The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check for cranial nerve number five and number seven Part of that is to check for taste taste as well. So I'm going to tell me what sensation you feel close your eyes What do you taste? Salty. Okay, and this one Sweet sweet perfect so that's good for credit one number uh, number seven. Uh, for credit one number seven, we're going also to check for the motor and sensory. So more I need you to frown, smile. Very good. We check the masseter muscle up and down. Okay, open. Very strong. Okay, very good. She's able to feel. She's able to feel sensation. We're going to check for corneal reflex as well for sensation. All right, so open your eye. Okay, so she was able to close the eye, that's good. Now we're gonna check for cranial nerve number eight, which is for um, hearing and vertigo. Do you have any vertigo? Do you feel like it's spinning or anything like that? Did you ever feel like that? No. Okay, the room is not spinning on you? No. Okay, very good. So we're going to check for um, hearing. So I'm going to whisper a word. Night, night. Baseball. Okay, so she was able to tell and to hear. Tell me if you feel any difference in bo in either one of your ears, or you feel it the same. The same. Okay. Tell me when if you hear it. Tell me when it stops. Stop. Can you hear it? Yeah. Can you tell me when you stop? Gone. Gone. Okay, so it's positive. It's a positive. It's a good test. She passed the test as well, so the hearing is fine. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, cranial nerve number 9 and 10, which is glossopharyngeal. People with uh, issues with CVA or TIA, they have dysatrias or uh, dysphagia, or they're not uh, as expressive or anything, or expressive or aphasia, or global aphasia sometimes, all right? So we're going to check that. We're going to check, since we're going to look into her mouth, we're going to look into cranial nerve number 9. 10 and 12. 12 is also for uh, her tongue, okay? So I'm going to check for the strength of her tongue. Uh, the, the say la 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 la. la, 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 la. Say uh. Uh, uh. So the uvula goes up in the midway, doesn't go to the side. Turn to the left and right your tongue. Up and down. Very good. So there is no issues with that. She able to swallow. She's able to articulate words. So she's fine. All right. So there is no issues with cranial nerve number 9, 10, or 12. The next cranial nerve we're going to check is cranial nerve number 9, which is the spine. So I need you to put pressure against my hand with your head. She's very strong. How about the other? We always check in the muscle cone here of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Raise your shoulders. All right. She's strong. Very good. Plus five. All right, so we're good with the, we're good with the, all the cranial nerves, number 12. So the next thing we're going to check is the motor function, okay? So the motor function is going to check for uh, symmetry and size of the uh, muscles and the tones, uh, hypertonia or hypotonia of the muscles. Can you move your arms, your legs? 
All right, so I see that she has good range of motion, passive range of motion. She's able to move, good tone. There is no wasting or any atrophy, which could be indicative of MS or ALS or maybe sometimes people with uh, cerebral palsy. All right, so she's good with that. The next thing we're going to do is the balance, all right? We're going to check for cerebellar. So I need you to stand for me. We're going to do a quick test, okay? I'm going to move the camera. All right, I don't know if we are able to see there. All right. Okay, yeah, we're able to see. Okay, good. I got nervous because before I got stopped. All right. I need you to walk back and forth, please. All right, very good. Stay there, walk backwards. We're looking, checking for balance, moving forward. Stand over there, walk on your feet on your uh, tiptoe, walk tiptoeing, and then walk back on your heels. On your heels. All right, I need you to walk, touching your heels and your toes at the same time in one line. Close your eyes. All right, come back. She's doing good. There's no issues with balance or no issues with anything like that. I'll stay there, just uh, close your eyes. Uh, lift one leg. And hold that position change with the other leg i need you to jump with one leg the other okay so there is no issues with balance she's doing okay so the next thing we're going to do we're going to take a romber uh, romberg's test we're going to take a test for strength of the extremities to see if there is any atrophy or any weakness all right so i need you to put your uh, stretch your arms forward and hold it there She's able to hold it. There is no weakness. People with CVA or TIA, sometimes they have right side weakness, left side weakness. She's able to do it. All right, I just need you to sit down over here, Angelica. Thank you. So we're going to check for coordination, all right? So I need you to touch your nose with a finger. Okay, the other one. I need you to tap your, your legs like that as fast as you can. So coordination is good. I need you to touch your shin with your heel. All right, the opposite leg. Don't, don't just go like that, there you go. The other one. So she's able to do it without any problems. We're good, you pass the test for coordination. If you don't mind, just sit down over there, please. We're gonna just move the camera really quick to go back to position, okay? All right. All right, so we're good there. So going back to position, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check for sensory, right? Extra septi, extra septi, uh, perception. All right, so we're going to do light touch, sharp and dull, to, uh, dull uh, sensation, okay? So I need you to tell me, I'm going to touch you with something light. I need you to tell me where you feel it. That's close. Yes, close your eyes. And you tell me exactly which side you feel it, whether it's right or left. All right? Mm -hmm. mm, right. Okay. Right. Okay. Left. Okay. Put your hands this way. Right. Okay, very good. She passed the test. I'm going to show you something. I'm going, this is dull. And this is sharp, okay? Can you tell? Mm -hmm. All right. Which one is dull? That's dull. What is this? Sharp. Okay. What do you feel? Dull. What do you feel? Sharp. What do you feel? Sharp. 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 Okay, so she, she's good. There's no peripheral issues, peripheral sensation. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check for uh, proprioceptive sensation. All right, actually, no, we're going to do heat. We're going to check for cold and heat, okay? Or hot. Okay. So tell me whether it's hot or cold. Hot, uh, sorry, cold. Hot. 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 Cold. Okay. Very good, she passed the test. There is no uh, thermal 
uh, perception which is intact the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the um, we're going to do the um, stereognosia okay so i'm going to give you an object in your hand you're going to tell me what object that is okay Battery. Okay, very good. That's a battery. Tell me what it is. Coin. Coin. Excellent. That's a coin. She passed the test. Usually people with Parkinson's disease or advanced dementia, they're not able to tell what object they have. All right, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to do the graphothesia. Graphothesia is going, I'm going to write something in your hand. You tell me what it is, which letter? A. Yes. And this one, close your eyes. M. M. Very good, you passed the test. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check distinction. Should I close my All right, keep your eyes closed okay. now. I'm going to put pressure on both sides. You tell me when I remove one, you tell me where you still feel it, okay? I feel the left, right. Okay. Right. Both. Okay, very good. She passed the test. The next thing we're going to do. Can I open my eyes? You can open your eyes now. Yes, thank you very much. We're going to also check. I forgot about proprioceptive, proprioceptive sensation. So we're going to do motor and position. Okay, so I'm going to take one of your body parts and I'm going to move them up and down. You tell me whether I move them up or down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I need you to relax. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yes. Don't fall asleep, please. Okay, she was able to tell me. Now, I need you to tell me whether you feel this or not, all right? Yes. You feel it? Mm -hmm. Do you feel the vibration? Yes. You feel the vibration here? Yes. What about here? Yes. Okay, perfect. So there is no deficit there. She has no sensory met, um, deficit there neither. So the next thing we're going to do is the deep tendon reflexes. So if you don't mind sitting here. So this is the last part of my video. Hopefully it didn't go over the time. And I hope I'll be able to catch it there. All right, so we're going to do bicep. Biceps. Just relax your arms, okay? Just relax. Let go. All right, don't do anything. All right, ready? All right, that's a plus two. Bicep. All right, that's a plus two. Break your radialis. It was like kind of weak. All right, now I see. All right, break your radialis on the left. Positive. We're gonna do patellar. That was hyper. Maybe I did it too hard. Okay, good. And then Achilles tendon, okay. All right, perfect. So uh, this completes our um, video for today. I hope you like it. Um, I wanted to say more things, but uh, we ran out of time. Uh, I did my best, all right? Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.